Lesson 6.9 is solving problems involving linear relations. Example 1, the price of one currency in terms of another is called the exchange rate. Based on the graph, write an equation for the value of Canadian dollars in euros. So D represents Canadian dollars and E would represent euros. So what we need to do is figure out the exchange rate. We might understand things like that where the value of our money is different uh, when you're in Canada compared to how much Canadian money is worth if you go to the United States. So if we're going to Europe and we're looking at euros, what we want to do is look at the graph and figure out what the exchange rate is. So what I'm always trying to remind you to do is to look for the nice clear points. And in this case, there's not a lot of really clear points. Um, if I look, you know, for some of these points, they're not touching the corners of squares. Until I get to, I think that looks like a pretty good point. So that would be $70 in Canadian money, and that would be 50, worth only 50 euros. So if $70 in Canadian dollars, 70 divided by 50, that's 1.4. So what this graph is telling us, I just did a little rise over run calculation. This is telling us that for every 70 Canadian dollars, that is worth 50 euros. So what we have to do for every euro, we're going to multiply it by 1.4. That's the exchange rate. And I just found that from the graph. So it says here in B, what is the value of 20 euros in dollars? If I had 20 euros and I multiply it by 1.4, I get 28. So that means 20, 20 euros is actually worth 28 Canadian dollars. Example two, Alex went on a ski trip that cost $1,700. He borrowed the money from his parents, so that's how much he borrowed, to pay for the trip. Every month he pays back $250. So he's trying to pay them back. Then it says, let A dollars represent the amount and let T months represent the time. So write an equation to represent the situation. So they want you to use A and T, T months. The whole entire line would start at $1,700, right? So if we were going to graph this, the line would start up here if this is $1,700 and it would go down from there because the value or the amount that he owes is actually getting less every month because he's paying some back. So the initial value of the line is $1,700 and he's paying them back $250 per month and they said let T be months. So that what that, what that is saying so far is that if we start the line at $1,700 it would go up from there by $250 a month. So if we're actually paying the loan down, we have to make sure that we make this a negative. We're paying down. The $1,700 goes down by $250 every month. The total amount goes down because you're paying the loan off. Then it says use the equation to find out when Alex will have paid off his loan. If he paid off his loan, that means the amount of the loan would be zero. It would be gone. So if the amount of the loan is zero dollars, we would actually sub that in for the amount of the loan. The amount of the loan now is zero. It's been paid off. That is what the equation might look like. Zero equals negative 250t plus 1,700. So what we need to do now is solve this equation for t. I do realize that you guys can do this just using common sense, right? If you borrowed $1,700, you could figure out how many months it would take to pay them back if you paid $250 a month. You might make a table, you might draw a graph, but most likely you're just gonna start guessing, right? Okay, $250, okay, two months, you know, this would be you, oh, that's $500. Okay, that's only about half of it. Uh, so there must be about four months. Four months would be $1,000. How many more months would you need to pay? And, and you could figure this out in your own head. I'm just trying to show you what it would be like to use the equation to solve it. Because in grade 9 and 10, this is what you're going to need to know how to do. Uh, if I move this negative 250 to the left-hand side of the equation, it's going to become positive 250. And then 
you might have known this all along, we can take 1,700 and divide it by 250, which is what we could have done from the very beginning. But I'm just trying to show you that the equations, how to write the equations first of all, and that the equations have something to do with your answer. So 250, those are being multiplied together. So if I move it to the other side, whoops, and I divide it by 250, I get 6.8. So what that means is it's going to take about 6.8 or 7 months to pay back the loan. Last example, example 3, Ashok and Katie recorded a distance for a ball rolling over a period of time. Uh, Ashok found that the ball rolled 9 meters in 3 seconds and Katie found that the ball rolled 6 meters in 2 seconds. Write an equation that relates the distance d and the time in t seconds. So the distance is equal to, we need a rate here, we need a speed. So if she, Ashuk found that the ball rolled 9 meters in 3 seconds, if I take 9 meters and I divide it by 3, that's 3 meters per second. What about Katie? Katie said the ball rolled 6 meters in 2 seconds. If I take 6 and divide it by 2, I also get 3 meters per second. So the ball is rolling at 3 meters per second, and that is the rate. So we have our equation here. D equals the rate with a variable or a letter beside it, and it's in time in seconds. Then it says, how far did the ball roll in 8 seconds? Well, 8 seconds, T is time. So what we would need to do is just sub in 8 for T. So we get 24. And what that means, we just found a distance. How far did the ball roll? In 8 seconds, the ball rolled 24. And then if you're wondering about what, what kind of units this would be in, it tells you in the question. It'll always say, are we talking about meters or kilometers? This is meters. So the ball rolled 24 meters.